Hey everybody, Jeremy here with the Practo IT channel. Tonight we're going to do a twofer. First off, we're going to look at Proxmox and get the dark mode turned on. And then we're going to do an install of the Fedora 38 workstation beta. Let's jump into it. Okay, so we're here on the one Proxmox server that I have not upgraded yet today. We're on the updates option here. We're going to say refresh. And as you can see, we've got a good number of updates here ready to go. We're going to say upgrade, say yes to continue. And that's going to do its thing. And it will have to reboot when it's done pulling updates. While we're waiting, dark mode in all its glory. Can you believe it? It's been asked for, for I don't know how long. This is a thing of beauty. All right, so I've already downloaded the ISO image for Fedora 38 beta, and we are gonna go ahead and build a new virtual machine. And we'll set PVE01 store, and Fedora Workstation Live, 64-bit beta 1.3 ISO. Okay, we'll turn on the QEMU agent, and we'll give it 50 gigabytes, eight CPU cores, just because, 16 gigs of RAM, network is fine, and we will confirm this. Start after created. Say finish. Down here on the bottom, it's going to come up. And we're going to just go ahead and start live. Now, while we're doing that, back over here on the other server, we are ready for a reboot. And that will be up in another couple of minutes. And while we wait for that, we can get into our Fedora install. So as I mentioned in other live streams, I do not use Fedora all that much, but I do like to stay current on what is out there and what is available in new releases. We're gonna to install to the hard drive, English, English, Continue. Yes, we want to proceed because we know it's pre-release software. All right, so I think we're all good here. Let's say done. And change the time to be proper. I've noticed on these new installers and the the new ubuntu installer is the same way it consistently gets my time zone incorrect it's always putting me in indiana or illinois and i'm in michigan so your mileage may vary on the time zone detection here I'll say done begin installation okay and that's going to take a little while so let's bounce back to our proxmox server and we'll hit the refresh button. And we have beautiful dark mode. I know there are other changes in this release, but I have to say it, this is probably the one that I and a lot of Proxmox users are most excited about. So thank you, thank you, thank you to the developers of Proxmox for finally adding this in. No more kludgy, hacky scripts to run to get a dark mode and then lose it with the next update. This is a thing of beauty and I am very excited for it. And my eyes, my eyes, thank you. <laughs> really have nothing running on this server at the moment, but uh, we'll concentrate on the one here. We're installing Fedora on. And 
I will be back in a few moments when we get further in the install. Okay, we've reached the final stage of the installer, at least the first stage. And we're going to say finish installation. And it should start a reboot process here. Or maybe we've got to do that ourselves. Restart. And we're going to take out the virtual optical disk. And we're booting into our system. Now, you may have noticed during the install that unlike Ubuntu and other Debian derived distributions on Fedora, the installer is sort of a two stage process. You do the initial part of the install and that gets the files on your storage medium, hard disk, SSD, etc. And then once you reboot, that is when you create your initial user. And of course, like everything else, there are pros and cons to this approach, but it's a choice. All right. So this is sort of the stage two of the setup process. Start setup. Location services. No, I'm turning that off. Automatic problem reporting. No, not for a VM. Next. Enable third-party repositories. You can skip this, but keep in mind that it has popular apps and drivers and some proprietary software. So yes, I want to enable third-party repositories. And we're going to skip this for the time being. And if you were to use the enterprise login option down here, this is going to give you the option to connect with Active Directory or similar service. And we can start using Fedora. And it is in fact using GNOME 44, which we will see in another month or so from the next Ubuntu release as well. So we might as well take the tour just for the sake of argument. Press the super key to open windows and apps. And look at that. That is very nice. For those not in the Unix mindset or Linux mindset, the super key is the windows key on a typical PC or the command key on a Mac. Just type into search so you can launch apps that way. Similar again to spotlight on the Mac. Keep on top with workspaces, so the whole concept of multiple desktops or workspaces is front and center. And gestures, I'm not using a touchpad, so that does not apply here. And that's it. Very nice. So, just for the sake of argument, let's see if they've got... Control-Alt-T does not bring up a terminal. If I tried Super T, it would open up a tab in my browser, so we're going to avoid that. So activities gives you search and it gives you the ability to switch to your desktops. You can also access your apps here. We've got LibreOffice installed and these are the nice new icons. So I'm assuming it's going to be version 7.5. And right here, it does in fact say it's 7.5. So that is great. We are up to date on that. We can take another look here. And we've got the normal suspects as far as the default software. Not a lot of fluff installed, but enough to give you basic functionality so you can get up and using this install. So let's launch Firefox, just see what we've got here. And we can bring up my YouTube channel, which is great. And we can check our version of Firefox, which should be, it's 1.10. I think 1.11 was just released. I would expect that as we move closer to release candidate and a full release, 
we will probably see version 111 of Firefox. So that's all in good. We've got critical software update ready, a restart and update. So this is, this is a little bit different than other Linux distributions. So it's going to reboot and then it's going to start installing updates and it's going to give you the do not turn off your computer message, which is reminiscent of Windows in a lot of ways. We're almost there now. It did a pretty big jump. Okay. Well, report it the first time. And we don't need to review that. All right. Unexpected system error. Kernel core 6.2.7300 Fedora core 38. The backtrace does not contain enough meaningful function frames to be exported. It is annoying, but does not necessarily indicate a problem with your computer. So we'll delete that. <laughs> no harm, no foul. It is beta software. So just for the sake of argument, one of the things I always like to do with a new distribution release is see how easy it is to add my network printer. And I'm sure one of these days I will not be able to add this particular printer. It is a few years old now, but we'll see how Fedora 38 beta does. And printer. Oh, look at that. Can I say easier than Windows? Easier than Windows. I might add easier than Mac OS as well. An app is requesting additional printer drivers. Find software. Unable to find the Brother HL5370 DW series you were searching for. See documentation for more information. Okay. Well, so that may or may not work. Well, I guess there's one way to find out if this worked. Start the test page. And we'll pause for just a moment so I can go grab the test page out of the other room. We have a test page. That's all good. So we know the printer works, which is great. See what we've got for backgrounds. Interesting, some of these. I like this uh, deep purplish color. I'm assuming this is the dark mode version. There we go. Beautiful. I can definitely work with that. Let's take a look at settings and we'll come down to the bottom about. Okay, so 16 gigs of RAM, eight cores of KVM processing Goodness, 64-bit, GNOME 44, this is running Wayland, and it is saying that it's virtualized. Jump back here to the summary, and so it does have QEMU guest editions installed, which is great. Something you do not see with Ubuntu without an extra step, so... That is nice. We're running 1280 by 800. And usually I do 1440 by 900. Doesn't make a huge change, but that's normally the resolution I choose for this type of thing. On date and time, it's all good. We're going to switch to a 12 hour clock, AM, PM. You may have heard in my midweek news episode this week that Microsoft is going to try to make their default apps less of a Charlie Foxtrot and they could take a page out of the Fedora handbook or I should be more specific the GNOME handbook and make it a simple option to do this so many other options in the settings app again this is pretty nice it's time to wrap this up. All right. This has been a quick look at dark mode in Proxmox, as well as the beta version of Fedora 38 workstation. I have to say, I'm rather impressed with both. And I am very curious to see 
what final changes might be in store for Fedora 38 before it's fully released on us. So thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate all of you. Please give a thumbs up to the video. Feel free to share it with friends, family, colleagues, anybody that might get some use or enjoyment out of the video. And I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.